a late lunch is served on the flight deck. Roger, shrimp, just like always. The guys keep stealing it. You guys look like you're having much too much fun up there. Almost 200 miles beneath them, the crew spot lightning flashes as dawn breaks over South America. You want to do one of me coming up to here? Coach, doing a roll? If you like, come up. The crew take time off to relax. The novelty of weightlessness is too much to resist. It really is zero gravity. After a busy first day and a short sleep, it's time to make themselves at home. Although they've escaped from Earth to the immensity of space, the five of them are cooped up in two cabins no more spacious than a caravan. The small flight deck leads down through a hatchway into the larger mid-deck. The door slightly open on the left is the toilet. Straight ahead is Discovery's main hatch. The blue box on the right is the galley. The front of the mid-deck is covered with stowage lockers for equipment and the astronauts' belongings. Behind Dan are the sleeping bags which they float around in, weightless. Bill helps Carl and Jim check out a power ratchet for tomorrow's spacewalk. <laughs> are we recording that? Yes, yes, we, we got it. The ratchet and all the systems controlled by the orbiter's 2,100 switches are powered by electricity from fuel cells that combine hydrogen and oxygen. The waste from the cells is pure water. What the astronauts don't drink is dumped overboard. And a uh, very nice view of the water now, Frank. Tell him thanks. How does he know I'm doing it? Uh, Frank, uh, the cameraman is going to pan around here and uh, go into the airlock. As Mr. Bill uh, pulls off the lower torso assembly of my suit, in the wardrobe, Bill shows off the finer points of the costumes for the spacewalk, in NASA speak, an EVA for extravehicular activity. Of course, the lower torso assembly is uh, the EVA pants, and uh, goes on the uh, hard upper torso, which is the, uh, the EVA uh, coat, if you will. Just the marker. And Mr. Bill's holding the comm cap. Pass that to Jim. Jim, float it. That comm cap is uh, what goes on under our helmets and uh, allows us to uh, to hear uh, discovery and mission control and also uh, to uh, answer questions and uh, make comments while we're uh, performing. Let me squat for us. <laughs> Racks of scientific experiments keep the crew busy inside the orbiter. Jim explains to Mission Control how his eyes perform in weightlessness. Five, four, three, two, one. When Spars is only 400 feet away, Frank takes over the controls and flies the orbiter by eye. He must bring Discovery within arm's length of the satellite. And by Mark. Okay, 3033. Okay, I'll just do three then. With his left hand, Frank fires the thrusters to match the speed of the approaching satellite. This and the landing are his two big moments. Eventually, the orbiter and spars are less than 40 feet apart. So we're at point? We're at uh, point eight. Point eight. Stand by to go to point nine. Okay. Bill keeps the orbiter level as the shifting weight of spars on the end of the arm tries to roll Discovery over. Oh, man. Oh, is that cool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slowly, Dan maneuvers spars around the orbiter 
making sure that its cameras are pointing in the right direction. As Bill toggles the joystick that controls the 44 thrusters, Spars takes a look in through the window. It's about there, Jim. Sweep right and over the nose. Tomorrow, they're heading home. To put Discovery in the right Five, orbit, Bill four, fires the orbital maneuvering engines at the rear. Two, one, mark. Whoa. I'll take the flight control power off at this time. This burn has slightly changed Discovery's speed, so that it will arrive over Florida at their planned landing time tomorrow. Each day offers only a couple of chances when they can attempt re-entry to get back home. To the, I guess, do we want the logic and drivers off? Yep. Again? Yeah, it's getting from the other end. Mm -hmm. One logic and drivers off? Yeah. Except yeah. for this one. Okay. Is that these? Yep. This one? Yep. This one? Yep. These two? Yep. Well, normally you power it off, you power them all off, and then you power that one back on, I think, I believe. Well, that's what we do post-sleep, but I don't know if you need to do that. I mean, pre sleep. If you do, it's part of the. Is that what it says in the checklist? Yeah, two Whatever it says in the checklist. It says as, as required, basically. It's the bag, man. But they're not quite home and dry yet. There's sudden rain in Florida, and the landing is waved off for 24 hours. When it hits the thin air, the shuttle will slow dramatically. The crew are inside a raging fireball. Flames flicker past the window. The tiles on the orbiter are red hot. The glow turns white as the shuttle drops into the denser air. It's hurtling through the atmosphere at 12 and a half thousand miles per hour. Only 12 minutes to landing in Florida. <laughs> 